So in chemistry, when we're monitoring the rate of a chemical reaction, it's quite common for us to take the results of an experiment where we've measured a quantity over a given time during a chemical reaction and to put that information into a graph. And when we do that, we find that we always end up with almost exactly the same shape of graph. Okay, and the basic idea is that the graph will go up and it will then flatten off. And we're going to look at each part of this graph separately, but we're going to start with the part at the top, okay, which comes from a French word, oh, which is plateau. Okay, and plateau is the French word for tray. So you can think of the flat tray that you would carry things maybe from the kitchen through to the dining room or through to the living room or whatever um, on a tray. Okay, that flat part of the graph is known as a plateau. Now the plateau gives us two separate pieces of information. Okay, now to show you the separate pieces of information that it can give you, I'm just going to drop a ruler onto the screen for a second. And what we're going to do is I'm going to draw a line, dashed line back to the plateau, back to the y-axis of my graph. And I'm also going to look at the point at where it just goes flat and no more. Okay, so I think it's probably just gone flat, let's say about there. It's quite a thick line, so it can be quite difficult to tell sometimes when the line is as thick as that. But I'm just going to draw a dashed line down to the x-axis like that, and then I'm going to take the ruler off. And that's going to show us the two bits of information that the plateau gives us. So we go to the point where it just goes flat and no more. And if we go back to the y-axis, what that's going to tell us is it's going to give us the total, in this case, mass that's been produced. So that might be here, and it's let's just say for argument's sake, there's no grid lines on here that help us, but let's just say that's 3.6 grams. Okay. The second bit of information it gives us when we go down here to the x-axis, okay, is the time that the reaction finished at. Because the point at which the plateau happens, okay, plateau, helps if you can spell plateau. Um, the plateau is telling us that the reaction is finished. Okay, so the first piece of information that the plateau will give us is how much has been made in this reaction, whether that be the volume or the mass, okay? And in this case, the how much has been made is 3.6 grams. But it also tells us how long the reaction took before the reaction was finished. And that's down here at the bottom of the graph, okay? Which is going to be, for argument's sake, let's say about 190 seconds. So this reaction produced 3.6 grams in 190 seconds. And both of those pieces of information come from the very start of the plateau, okay, the point at which the reaction has just gone flat and no more. The curve has just gone flat and no more. And that's the point at which the reaction has finished. So the second piece of information that our rate graph gives us is from this part of the curve here, this part of the graph, okay, which is known as the curve. And that is going to be telling us about the speed of a reaction. But as you can see from the graph that you have there, a curve on its own doesn't really tell you too much about the speed. You can, however, have a look at different parts of the curve. So if I look at the part of the curve down here and compare it to the part of the curve up here, you can see that down here, the curve is much steeper And up here, it is less steep. And that is because the reaction is slowing down as time goes on. So it starts off where it is faster. And then it's going to carry on and it's going to slow down. It's going to get slower and slower until it reaches this plateau. And remember, the plateau is the point where the reaction is finished. But what if we want to compare more than one curve? And that's probably the more common type of question that you're going to get in chemistry. So what you're going to have is two graphs 
uh, so two curves, sorry, on the same graph. And you would be posed the problem of how does reaction A become reaction B? So what happens to reaction A to make it reaction B? Well, the first question that you have to answer when you're thinking about that is, is reaction B faster or is reaction B slower? And all we have to do is compare the curve. Okay, so we're not actually interested really in this plateau part of the graph, although we can see they're at the same height. What we're really interested in is the curve of the graph. And at this point, what you can see is that B is much steeper than A, okay? And because it's steeper, it is indeed faster, not slower. Now, knowing the chemistry that you know, you might be able to come up with some reasons why the reaction has gone faster. So what could we have done to a reaction to make the reaction go faster? So have a think to yourself. And what you should hopefully come up with are the things that we learned when we were learning about rates of reaction. So the things that we can change are the particle size or surface area. Remember, those two are the same thing, although one gets bigger, the other gets smaller. We could also change the temperature. And we can also change the concentration. Now, it's not enough as a chemist just to say, I could change the particle size, I could change the temperature, because that could also make a reaction go slower. So what do we do to the particle size to make it go faster? We remember have to make the particle size smaller. The temperature, we need to make bigger, increase the temperature, so a hotter temperature, and also the concentration needs to be hotter. Now there is one extra, which is the presence of our catalyst. The only thing with catalyst is that catalysts don't apply in every scenario. And that's because not every chemical reaction has a catalyst. Now you wouldn't be expected to know for National 4 or National 5 whether or not a reaction had a catalyst and therefore whether it would make it go faster or slower. Okay, but you do have to know that if the reaction's gone slower, that catalyst can never be the answer because a catalyst, remember, can only speed up a chemical reaction. So let's try and put all that information together in another example. And here what we've got is a graph with not one or two or even three. It has four different curves on it. So reaction A, B, C and D. And what we've done is we've given you a description of reaction A. So in reaction A, there are 10 grams of magnesium ribbon with excess one mole per litre hydrochloric acid at 25 degrees C. Now what that basically means is that the hydrochloric acid that we've used is still going to be some left at the end of the reaction. So this reaction is over, the plateau part is when the magnesium ribbon has completely gone. Okay, it's completely reacted until it completely disappears. So what conditions, what could we change in the chemical reaction that could give us the reaction B. So if we take a look at B, now remember we're always in all four examples, sorry all three examples, going to be comparing them to reaction A. So reaction B, if we have a look at the curved part, we're only interested in the curved part remember, so we're comparing for example this part of the curve here with this part of the curve here. What we can see is that B is faster, so that's the first thing we have to figure out. Okay. The second thing we have to figure out is how much has been made. Now remember our how much comes from the height of the plateau. So the plateau for A remember was around about here. Okay. And the plateau for B is going to be around about here. And what that shows us is that reaction A and reaction B produce just the same quantity. And that tells us that if they produce the same mass, 
that in this case, the same mass must have been used. So to produce the same mass, you have to have used the same mass. And what that tells us from reaction A is that we're going to have 10 grams of magnesium. Now, because the reaction is faster, what we need to think about is what could have changed in that reaction in order to make the reaction go faster. So ribbon tells us about the particle size of the magnesium. So we could have changed the ribbon into a powder. We could have looked at the concentration. We could have turned one mole per liter acid. For example, here hydrochloric acid, we could have used instead two moles per liter hydrochloric acid. The last change that we can make is to the temperature. Instead of a 25 degrees C temperature, we could have done this reaction, let's say at 35 degrees C. Okay. So those are the changes we could have made that would turn reaction A into reaction B. If we think the same thing then for reaction C, what do we notice about C? Well, it's producing the same mass because the plateau for C up here is at the same height as the plateau for A. So again, we've used 10 grams. But the reaction is this time, if we compare the curve, so here with here, for example, we can see that C is slower. So what changes could we have made? Well, we could have had a larger particle size. So still 10 grams, but maybe this would be a 10 gram lump of magnesium. Instead of having um, a ribbon, a nice long piece of ribbon that weighs 10 grams, this time it might have been like a large sort of chunk or lump of magnesium ribbon. Our concentration, instead of being one mole per liter, we want to make it slower. So we could have maybe diluted that down to 0 0.5 moles per liter. And for the temperature, instead of 25 degrees C, maybe this reaction was carried out at, let's say, 15 degrees C. Okay, a colder temperature, lower temperature, making the reaction go slower. Now for the last example here, which is reaction D. I'm just going to move the screen down slightly so I've got a bit of room. And for reaction D, this one's a little bit more unusual because actually when you look at the curved part, okay, we can see it's exactly the same. Because it's exactly the same, that means the reaction is happening at the same speed. But what we can see is that the plateau part, instead of being up here, it's down here. Okay, so there's not as much made. And because there's not as much made, we know that there was not as much used. Now in this case, when we go back across, this one comes out to be about 1.6 instead of being sort of 3.6. And so we know that there's probably just a little bit under half of the mass of magnesium used. So I'm gonna say for this one, let's say four grams of magnesium would be used instead of the 10 grams, which is why the plateau for D is much lower. But really importantly with this one, we know that the reaction happened at the same speed. So it still has to be magnesium ribbon. It still has to be one mole per liter hydrochloric acid. And it still has to be 25 degrees C in order for this reaction to have gone at the same speed, but to have produced much less of the gas in this case it would be. Um, it's only produced 1.6 as opposed to 3.6. So I'm hoping what you can see just to kind of summarise and bring it all together, is that when we're looking at a rate graph, we've got this kind of standard shape of the graph, which is this upward 
and then flattening off. Now there are two parts to the graph. Okay, the first part is known as the plateau and that tells us when the reaction is finished. It tells us how much has been made when the reaction is finished, as well as telling us how long the reaction took. And then we have the curved part of the reaction. Okay, the curved part of the graph, which is telling us the speed of the chemical reaction. It can tell us the speed at different times in the same reaction. So here we've got a faster part of the reaction at the beginning, and a slower part of the reaction towards the end, as it slows down, as it runs out of chemical until the chemical reaction is eventually finished. Or it can be used to compare two different reactions. Okay, so we can look at reaction A versus reaction B, and we can say that A is slower than B, B is faster than A. We can then think about the different conditions which could have caused that change. And lastly, we can look at all of that together and look at reactions where not only has the speed or the rate of the chemical reaction changed, but also the quantity of the products produced can change as well. And that can be caused by a different quantity of chemical being used in the first place. So in this case, we've got, for example, A to D, where the reaction is going at the same speed because the curve, curved part of the reaction here is the same sort of gradient, but the plateau is much lower in D, which tells us that less than half of the magnesium ribbon used in A would be used in reaction D. Okay, I hope that makes some sense for you. Remember, if you don't understand any of the stuff involved in this video, or there's any questions that you might have, please do not hesitate to ask any, uh, any of your chemistry teachers for a little bit more help.